uh, with, you know, uh, big name, big celebrities. Um, so that's what I'm going to probably do over the next year. But, uh, yeah, so keep keep an eye out for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's plenty, to, there's plenty of songs to listen to right now. You know, I have, besides my two albums, um, you know, I've produced quite a few singles. And, um, and then I have the collections, sort of like the best of stuff from my radio show. Mm-hmm. And believe me, there's something there for everybody. It's pretty wild stuff. Yeah, looking looking forward to uh, the release of that upcoming uh, effort. Yeah, it's going to be great, man. I'm telling you. Now, you got a holiday special coming up in the month of December now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I haven't got the dates yet, but it's usually mid-December. I have two shows, two one-hour specials, and uh, it's going to be all music, probably like 30, 35 songs that you would never hear anywhere else. Uh, some of them are on... It's a Red Peter's Christmas Volume 1 CD, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, you can find at uh, Amazon and, um, you know, all the download sites. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, it's a lot of fun, man, I'm telling you. I'm, I feel very fortunate. You know, and it's really awesome too to have it on you know, have these channels that that Howard has with Howard 100 and and, and Howard 101. Probably, you know, I, that's probably the only reason why I kept my satellite radio subscription because of not just the Howard show in general, but for all the other shows that are produced under the 101 banner and like your program and stuff. I think it's just an awesome thing, and I just hope it doesn't go away anytime soon. Yeah, I know. I hope not either. I hope you know it's coming right down to the wire, but you know. Howard is uh, fantastic. He's been very generous to me over the years, and he's been a great supporter of me, and I sure appreciate everything he's done for me, you know. So I hopefully will continue, and he'll do maybe five more years, and uh, I'll come along with him, and we'll have five more years of fun at least. Oh, that's all we can really ask for, and just you know, five, <laughs> two, three, whatever, just as long as he's on yeah. there, because we, he, it would be a big void if, yeah, if, no kidding, man. Him. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would listen to, but it's a uh, it's, it's a very compelling show for sure. Definitely, and look out for the month of December for the Red Peters holiday special on Howard 101. Is there before we I, I send you on your way? Did you make your big television appearance tonight? Is there anything else you would get a, want, like to get across to the, our listeners up here in uh, the nosebleed section in Northwest Minnesota? Well, I, uh, I have a fondness for your area. You know, when I uh, came out with uh, Old Blue Balls is back in 2000, I I toured all around the, uh, the Midwest and uh, northern United States. And, geez, and I met a lot of really great people out there. But I'll tell you one thing. You know, uh, check out redpeters.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Check out redpeters.com. There's a lot of good stuff there. And it's, uh, you know, it can lead you to a lot of different places and keep you entertained for a, for a long time. So that's pretty much all I have to say. And, of course, tune in to the Red Peters Comedy Music Hour if you have a series and enjoy some great holiday tunes. I want to thank you, uh, before I send you on your way, your way, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. A true musical legend, Mr. Red Peters. Thank you thank so much, you, sir. Thank you, Glenn, very much, man. I truly appreciate it. Happy holidays, my friend. Right on. Pioneer 90.1 KSRQ Thief River Falls Grand Forks A service of Northland Community and Technical College Well, what do you think of that, gang? Tuesday Night Experiment, Red Peters Yeah, that was totally right on and righteous Red (laughs) Peters with us But now we get another guest, our third and final guest He has written a a fantastic new book About one of the great acts that you call You consider modern rock, alternative rock or whatever One of those acts that you just The music was so great and influential But a lot of people don't really know much about them Their name is uh, Husker Du uh, The book is called Husker Du The story of the noise pop pioneers Who launched modern rock Here is the author of this fantastic book I, I do want to welcome uh, Mr. Andrew Earls Did I get the last name right? Yes you did all right, welcome to the Tuesday Night Experiment. Uh, first of all, big props uh, for coming out with this great book, Who's Could Do, The Story of Noise Pop Pioneers Who Launched Modern Rock. Well, I appreciate that. That's very nice. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, how did this book come, like, come about? Uh, I mean, Who's Could Do is one of those great groups, but, I mean, as far as, like, commercial sales, we were talking off uh, off the mic here before, one of those groups that didn't quite sell millions and millions of records, but yet 
uh, one of these great groups that have a, a long and lasting legacy and influence on what became alternative rock or what is known as alternative and modern rock. Right. Well, um, the book came about. Yeah, it's, there's several ways to look at that. Well, you just and we'll you know, get to that in a second. Uh, but just to get this out of the way very quickly, mm-hmm. uh, the book. I mean, I've been a lifelong fan, and or a super fan, or you know, little, little level above a fan, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but the book came about because I don't know if you're familiar with this series of books. Uh, called 33 and a Third. Each book is written about a, a certain album. album. Yes. Okay. Yeah, great series. Right. They did a open call for pitches in early 2007. And, you know, it's not it's not a proper book proposal. It's more of a you know, thousand-word pitch, if you will. And I, I've always thought that, you know, a Who's Your Album would be good for that series uh, because they did a minute and did it Double nickels on the dime by the minute mm-hmm. and uh, well, that's not the only reason. But I uh, so I threw this thing together. I had a very hard time deciding between uh, two of the albums, Thin Arcade and Flip Your Wig, mm-hmm. and I figured I'd go with Flip Your Wig for certain reasons. And I wrote it, and they rejected it. Um, so I, and it turns out they they end up posting after all of the submissions come in, they end up posting how many writers uh, pitched a certain album by certain bands. They just, well, they just, you know, they do a rundown on the website, and it turns out that three other writers had the same idea that I did, Mm -hmm. which was, you know, that's telling. Uh, So, you know, I I just really labored, not labored, but uh, nitpicked that, um, that pitch, like, up until the last minute, really spent a lot of time trying to make sure it was perfect. And uh, so I felt like I couldn't just you know, languish on my hard drive. So I popped it up on my blog. Mm-hmm. And about nine months later, I got a call from uh, the acquisitions editor at Voyager Press. And, you know, it was pretty much out of the gate, asked if I was interested in writing a you know, full-length biographical treatment of the band. And uh, at that time, I was um, very much into the idea of writing a book. I, I've been writing about music for, at that time, I've been writing about music for about 10 years, and you know, it was time for the first book is what I thought. Uh, I was hungry for it in a way. So kind of a good timing. I was already shopping another book proposal around <clears throat> at, uh, that you know, was obviously put on hold or aborted forever. Uh, so, yeah, that, you know, a couple of months of back and forth there, negotiations, and then that led to, you know, me getting the book deal, and that's how that happened. Mm-hmm. So, as far as you do, you wanted to, if you want to do influence of the band or how they're regarded now is there's not just two sides to that there are many sides to it um, I think that if I don't know there's there's some bands that are you know people either don't get it and if they get it they're fanatical about it who's could who's not one of those bands mm-hmm. um, they have fans that are in between those two extremes And they also are not an acquired taste in a way that, you know, if somebody didn't get it, they didn't, they would have a distaste for it, you know, like say, I don't want to get that. It, there's just all different types of of fans. There's people that, you know, really are into, you know, one album. There are people that are really into, you know, a a song or two. There, there's fanatics. Um, it's kind of all across the board. Uh, I do. I have found that they have sort of fallen through the cracks, or are not even regarded in a in a weird way by um, the generations that are coming up now. Mm-hmm. Uh, younger. 